Got a short week ahead of us. How does Boston College match up against Virginia Tech? We're going to talk about it today. You are locked on Boston College, your daily podcast on the Boston College Eagles. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome, everyone. This is Locked On Boston College, your team every day. I am your host, AJ Black. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. It's a short week ahead of us, Boston College fans. BC plays Virginia Tech at Lane Stadium on Thursday. As you know, this is a historic matchup. A lot of history between these two teams. And to kick us off, we have Sam from. Uh, the pot uh, which podcast again i'm totally blanking here sorry you're good uh we are i i work with Pete <laughs> thought of the two deep podcast covering yep. Virginia Tech football we're part of the sons of saturday network so you'll probably find us more at sons of sat vt on twitter and all that stuff. thank you sam let's chat let's talk let's let's kick this off here bc last year got smoked at home against virginia tech one of the games a lot of boston college fans look back to at the jeff halfley era and went what the heck happened there can you give us a little update on where Virginia Tech has kind of landed this year? And, you know, I think a lot of folks saw that Vanderbilt game, but now that they've yeah. Alabama, you start yeah. to see it a little too different lenses, numbers. right? Well, I'll tell you, um, and Pete and I have said this, I- I've been a, a Tech fan. I'm a Hokey family, been a Tech fan my whole life. That month of September was the most heart-wrenching, difficult month of football that I've ever experienced as a Tech fan. I mean, it was the the – just didn't show up for the first half of Vanderbilt game. Just didn't show up at all. Um, lose that one in overtime. You, you come back and you handle Marshall. You come back and you handle ODU. And then the Rutgers game, again, it's a first half where the team doesn't show up. You end up losing that one by a field goal. And then you have the the Miami game, which Tech played out of their mind good. It was a great football game. And then just couldn't close it out at the end. Some controversial ref decisions. It was just really heartbreaking month of football. And it honestly got to the point where you felt bad for the players and and stuff like that. But Mm -hmm. bounced back really well against Stanford. Showed a lot of heart. Dominated that game the whole time. Tech probably could have scored 45 or so in that game. But um, just kind of ran the ball most of the fourth quarter. You feel better about this team now than you did a couple weeks ago, but you haven't seen the progression that I think a lot of Hokie fans would have liked to have seen, and that is a bit worrisome. Talk about Kyron Drones. This is a guy that, against Boston College last year, really uh, solidified himself, I thought, as one of the best quarterbacks in the ACC. I know that he's had his ups and downs, but what does he look like so far this year? Uh, he's thrown for uh, 1,100 yards already, but he's thrown for four interceptions. What have you seen out of him so far? Yeah, and I'll just tell you, two of those interceptions were batted at the line of scrimmage and then picked off, um, which, you know, it happens. You don't want it to happen, but it's part of the game. He didn't have a lot of those last year. Mm. He has been a bit up and down. I would say his confidence was pretty shot at the beginning of this year. He was not making a lot of good throws. He was holding on to the ball too long. But when he does play with confidence like he has in the last two games, you can see his potential running the ball, running this offense, has great arm strength. Accuracy isn't perfect, but you've seen him make a lot of good throws. And if he gets protection, he is kind of an all-ACC caliber quarterback. He's not going to get protection every time, though. And the key for him is just staying confident, staying within the system, playing to his strengths. When they do that, he's pretty unstoppable in parts of his game. I have to ask, this is kind of a side note. Was that a catch against Miami? I'm going to say 50, 50, probably not. Um, it, I don't think a call gets more 50, 50 than that, though, mm-hmm. to be honest. And I actually um, have seen some people who are totally unaffiliated with both schools who are officials who say that's one of the rare instances where two rules contradict each other and you have to just go off one of them. Um, uh, that game shouldn't have gotten to that point. Right. Uh, You know, you had a fake field goal that gets blown up. Um, You mismanaged the clock at the end of the first half, allowing Miami to go down and kick that field goal. Don't stop Miami on fourth down a couple of times. Like just one of those games for Virginia tech, where a lot of little things added up to a a loss on the road. Now by shell Tootin, this is a guy, Boston college fans. If you do not know the story, I was just saying this on Sam's podcast. 
he almost ended up at Boston College. He literally, I believe, was on campus and then ended up getting pulled away to go to Virginia Tech. We saw him again, another guy that really played strongly against BC last year. What kind of back is this? And why? I, I, I think he's one of the best in the ACC. He, he, he for sure is. His nickname is Tugboat. So it's Tugboat Tootin back there. And he is. <laughs> That's a great name. <laughs> it's, it's perfect for him, too, because he is downhill, physical, has great burst, great vision. Uh, he's one of the better backs Virginia Tech has had in quite some time. And they've had a lot of good ones. Um, he's just been such a special player. He breaks a ton of tackles. I believe even after the bye week, he's top 10 in the country in broken tackles. So he's really tough to bring down. He's the best offensive player Tech has, probably the best player on the team. Um, the thing for him is he has been a bit beat up here now and again. So hopefully after the bye week, he feels fresh and ready to go. Now, Allie Jennings, is he going to be – he's playing, right? Yeah, so he's playing um, – Hasn't really been targeted. He played a few snaps against Miami, didn't get targeted. Played probably 20, 25 snaps against Stanford, didn't get targeted. I think he's back to 100%. We weren't totally sure what was was wrong with him. If he's back to 100%, that's really good for this offense. He has a ton of potential. and He's a guy that they want to be their wide receiver one. He just hasn't been healthy, broke his leg in the second game of last year, and then had the injury issue this year. So if he's in, he's the wide receiver number one. Now I got to ask you something. This is completely, I, I, I'm going off on a tangent here. Perfect. So the ACC scheduling finally changed and BC and Virginia tech are no longer connected rivals. Mm -hmm. um, I, th as a, a Boston college fans, I felt like felt like BC and Virginia tech, especially around that like two, mid 2000 era. Like there was a lot of connection and obviously the big East time there's connection between them. What was your thoughts about BC and playing them? Uh, it constantly because I know it, Virginia Tech fans felt very differently. It was weird because I, I think there was an idea of like, why do we play Boston College every year? Not like anti Boston College, but just like, what's what's the rationale behind this again? Because Blacksburg and you know Richmond, Virginia Beach, Northern Virginia, where Hokies are, it's you know it's three to four hours from NC State, Wake Forest, Duke, North Carolina. Like, why are we traveling all the way up to Boston to play Boston College? It didn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, I think it's good that they're starting to move away from that a little yep. bit. But like you said, there have been some classic matchups and really pivotal matchups, not only for ACC and Big East, but also for like national title implication matchups. You know, that game in 2007, I'm sorry to bring it up, Hokie <laughs> fans, if you're listening, but like, that was a game for like the winner of this has a chance at the national title. Um, the game yep. tech won to get to the national title in 1999 was against Boston college. So some really pivotal games, ACC championships have been played. So yep. um, it's a, it's, I, I, I struggle to use the word rivalry in the terms of like hatred, but it's a game with a lot of history. Yeah. And I, I think BC has kind of landed into a sweet spot where their protected rivals should be Pitt and Syracuse. Cause just like you said, right? They're the Northern ACC teams. These are the teams they should be playing a lot. But I think BC fans, especially, like there is a connection. It just hasn't. It hasn't hit recently because BC and honestly Virginia Tech hasn't been in that area yeah. mm -hmm. where it's been like both teams have been kind of down for a while, and like BC's been downer, but then <laughs> the North than Virginia Tech. But it's it's still great to have these games, especially I, I, you know I think as for Boston College to go to Lane Stadium at a night game that that that's special. What is so special? Like you say, you're a Virginia Tech fan. Tell us about that. What is so special I, about those night games? It is hard to put into words like the feeling in Blacksburg for a Thursday night game. Virginia Tech was one of the first programs to really adopt the weeknight games. Uh, it was one of part of Frank Beamer's genius as the head coach here was diving into that. And, you know, tech fans just feel like they belong playing a Thursday night game and it's mm. completely sold out. It'll be filled up to the corners. Totally. Probably over capacity with the student section. Uh, people take off like Wednesday through Friday of work. They're tailgating all day, Thursday. Um, it's a big time college football atmosphere. Like it is sec level atmosphere in lane stadium especially for thursday nights and it's just part of the brand of the school and it's something that virginia tech fans have really adopted and feel like is you know part of a, a differentiator with virginia tech compared to other schools
it, it's it has that vibe. And even I think for all college football fans, when you hear Virginia Tech at night at Lane Stadium, like it hits. Like you hear, like you know what that means. And for many schools, you can't replicate the vibe and the the atmosphere that Virginia Tech brings on a on a on a weeknight. Yeah, and you can't you you can't do that in practice, right? Like you can't right. sound system isn't going to bring that energy, right? It'll be noise, but it won't bring that that energy and the lights. And mm-hmm. um, I believe there was one point in like ended up being around like 2010, 2011, where Tech had won like ten straight thursday night home games just completely dominated on those days uh a little bit of a lull in the past decade in that record but the whole team did it is just a special atmosphere and it's something virginia tech fans hold very dear and i think it adds to the it'll add to the amp the amps on on thursday night it'll be a really loud stadium. all right in a moment i'm gonna wrap things up with sam but before we do that i want to talk to you about linkedin when you're hiring for your small business You want to find quality professionals that are right for the job. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just a job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job, but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. So what you need to do, Do what 2.5 small businesses using LinkedIn are doing right now. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. This is Locked On Boston College, AJ Black. Thank you all for listening. And if you are looking for more Locked On podcasts, check out the Locked On ACC podcast. I, I hear you guys about their 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 hating on BC, but you need to check it out to hear what they have to say. Now, Sam, let's talk about this defense. I, you know, I think BC fans, we are stuck thinking about Bud Foster. That's where yeah. a lot of folks are. How's the how's the Hokie defense looking this year, and who's some names to watch for? I know you guys um, much like the yeah much much like the offense, it has been a bit up and down. Um, I think this defense has been a lot better than what people think it has been. But uh, the defensive coordinator is Chris Marv. Uh, he was a linebacker, all a, all SEC linebacker at Vanderbilt when Brent Pry was the defensive coordinator there. He was at Florida State. And now uh, he's the DC at Virginia Tech. Um, Brent Pry definitely has his. Um, fingerprints on it they play a kind of more of a classic four two five four three four with a nickel type thing so it is uh a defense that wants to get after you with their defensive ends and play lockdown man coverage on the outside and that's what they're going to do dorian strong uh cornerback for virginia tech is as locked down of a corner as you're going to get in college football they just run him press man coverage on the outside against your best wide receiver and they let him go to work. And and no wide receiver has really had a good game against him for about two years. So they feel pretty good on that side of the ball. Pass rusher, Antoine powell Ryland. Um, he was one of the leaders. He had nine and a half sacks last year. Maybe should have gotten a 10th there in the UVA game, but uh, he's been really, really good this year rushing the passer, and they feel like the defensive line is deeper and fresher this year. So the pass rush has still been pretty good. Defensive secondary has... Had some bad moments in the Vanderbilt game, but other than that, been very good. The weakness is kind of at the linebacker spot. They haven't been perfect. They've missed some run fits that hurt them last year. Um, Been getting better as the season goes along, but if there's an area of weakness for this Virginia Tech defense, I think it's just simple run fits by the linebacker core. A lot of guys who have moved around positions, not a lot of experience. So there is some weakness on this defense for sure. So... Let's get into some prediction times. I we I was on your podcast. I I will get into my predictions on a later episode. You know the daily podcast, so you're gonna have to wait to hear what I think. But I want to hear. I want to hear Sam's thought. What does Virginia Tech need to do to win this game? You know, I think it's play with confidence, play with a little bit of swagger. It's it's something that this team hasn't had in their losses, but has had in their wins. And even the Miami game, the Virginia Tech team was playing with a ton of energy and a ton of confidence the whole way. I mean, that's a national champion caliber roster that the Hurricanes have, and Tech went toe-to-toe with them for four quarters. If this team plays with confidence, they should steamroll Boston College. and They they really should because that's what they did last year. 
Uh, they did it to Boston College, to Pitt, to Wake Forest, to Syracuse, to Tulane. And they've had moments of that this year. I think it'll be tougher against Boston College. It'll be a well-coached team with Bill O'Brien. And Thomas Castellanos can make any play in the book. And he's certainly a wild card. But I feel like if Virginia Tech is playing with confidence on offense and Kyron Drones is making the right reads, I feel good about this defense um, uh, keeping Boston College probably under that 21, 24 point mark. So I think the Hokies should feel confident covering this minus seven spread if, if I'm taking off my orange and maroon glasses and, and putting on the betting glasses. But then again, if they revert to the old offense that they shot, saw at the beginning of this year and the beginning of last year, Boston College will, will stick around in this game. And if it's a one score game, I'm taking the Eagles because Tech is one and 10 now with Brent Pry in one score games. It is horrific. So if it's a close game, Boston College should feel like they have the upper hand. That, that was going to be my last question. What is the vibes around Brent Brent Pry right now around the, the program and around the fan base? A plus in everything except for late game clock management and in-game preparation. It just feels like they've had instances where Tech looks completely outcoached. The Vanderbilt game. Tech had no idea what to do defensively in that game. Not a clue. Um, offensively, they looked lethargic. Um, there have been late game clock instances that have lost tech games just flat out because the coach didn't know when to call timeout. Um, and there have been some interesting play calls and strategies in close games that have led to them losing. But then again, this is a head coach who's only had two and a half years of experience as a head coach, offensive coordinator who only has two and a half years of experience calling plays, defensive coordinator who only has one and a half years of experience being a DC. So it's a really young coaching staff. They should get better. However, they haven't as much this year. I think tech fans feel like it's things are good. They're getting better. But that month of September was really bad. And there's a lot of pressure on this coaching staff to put together wins because they're not going to give them five years like they did Justin Fuente. If the wins don't come this year and next year, then they're going to be having another coaching search. All right, Sam, where can people find your work? So you can follow me on Twitter. It's where I'm most active at, I guess, X now we can call it that, uh, at Sam of Saturday. Uh, I'm the website manager at sonsofsaturday.com. So you can find all of our Virginia Tech stuff there. Uh, we'd love to chat with Boston College fans. I love learning about different schools. I know you were on my uh, Behind Enemy Lines podcast last year, AJ. So mm -hmm. if you want to just do a bunch of college football stuff, talk ball, uh, I'm always there. I'll be up late watching games. Um, yeah, so, so come hang out there. Sam, Jesse, thank you for coming on. And in a moment, I'm going to go over the weekend of ups and downs against Michigan State in college hockey. The defending Hockey East champions had a win and a loss. We'll get into all that in just a moment. If you know me, you know I like going to theaters, games, concerts, all of that. And if I'm going to go, I'm going to go through Game Time. Game Time has a new feature called Game Picks that makes getting tickets to your favorite teams and play live even easier. Game Time filters out the fluff to show you incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. With Game Time, the part that I love is they have their seat finder. If you are looking at a ticket, it's going to show you where your seat will be. So there's no guesswork. And they're all in ticket pricing. It takes out the guesswork and all the last-minute fees that you get on a lot of those other sites. So download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? It's game time. This is Locked On Boston College, AJ Black. I last week did an episode where I featured Eagles Nest Insiders. They are the super fans of Locked On Boston College. If you want to join and you want to get a full month for free, sign up. Show notes and it's in the show notes below with the promo code Bill O'Brien monster sign up today and also check out locked on college football with spencer mclaughlin he goes over everything including the latest in playoffs big matchups and everything you want find locked on college football on youtube wherever you get your podcasts now time to switch things up to some hockey talk and boston college 
played their beginning of their season this weekend on the road against Michigan State. Season started off great with Will Vogt getting two goals, Jacob Fowler having a shutout as Boston College wins 3-0 in their season opener. Things did not go so well in game number two, however, as Boston College loses to Michigan State 4-3. Bad second period as they fell behind and could not recover. So you go on the road, you win one out of two. But I got to say, if BC can cut out the errors and some of the sloppiness, this is going to be one of the hardest teams to play in college hockey. That Friday night game, they were easily better than Michigan State. Michigan State couldn't do anything. Their offense was throttled in that game. You had a freshman, one I mean a sophomore, and will vote that really didn't play all that much last year, go out there and dominate and get two goals for you. His name you hadn't even really brought up. They looked really good. You go to Saturday's game and it was a game where BC could have won that. They they really could have if they just cleaned things up. Michigan State was not better than them. They their their goalie Augustine was is very good, and that was what stopped BC because if if he wasn't standing on his head, BC you know could have scored some goals to to, to put this one away, but they didn't. But you know what? It's win. They win one game on the road against a top five team. That is still a positive. Um, that's positive momentum for a team that is is gonna have to play for the national championship. That's that's where the thing ends. Now they play next weekend on Friday against AIC. I don't know much about that team. I'm not gonna pretend. And on Saturday they have an exhibition against the U.S. National uh, Development Team. Uh, so that doesn't really count. <laughs> that's not really a real game. So they get AIC team I don't know much about, and the national team. So that's where they're at. So good um, good weekend for them, or pretty decent weekend for them. C- congratulations to the field hockey team. The field hockey team is very good, and I'm not going to get into them. This is a podcast where I do talk a lot about BC different sports, but I got to tell you, I don't talk about all of them. So don't get in my comment section and tell me, AJ, you're not talking about the diving team. I just don't. I don't talk about everything. I talk about what people want to listen to. And sometimes some of the smaller sports I don't get to. I apologize. I love y'all. I love every BC athlete out there. And I'll be back again tomorrow for another episode. So on tomorrow's show, Mitch Wolf is going to join me with Parker Fleming of Stats of War. We had him on last year. He's awesome. And he's going to talk to us all about the statistics about BC football. If you like it, you're going to want to hear about it. If you want to learn statistically where BC's at, it's a great show. We're going to do that. Then we got another episode. And then Wednesday, it's our preview with Mitch again. We got a big episode. And then Thursday is the game. So it's a short week. We're going to get into a whole bunch on this show. Thank you all. Make sure you hit me up on Twitter at AJBlack247. And uh, check me out on Eagle Insider as well. Thank you all for listening. I'll see you all again tomorrow for another episode of Locked On Boston College. Your team every day.